Here we have a what the physics video on projectile motion. Projectile motion is, as we said, an object moving through the air. The only force acting on the object is the gravitational force. So the only reason why the object would accelerate is because of the acceleration due to gravity, which we know is on the y-axis. Nothing, no form of acceleration on the x-axis. And that is one of the big issues here. So a ball is thrown at 4.47, a nice round number, uh, meters per second with an angle of 66 degrees above the horizontal. So the first thing we're going to do is draw it out. So we imagine here's some type of cannon or launching device of some kind and goes across like that, moving across. Lovely. We've got a launch angle here, theta, and we've got our launch velocity, which I'm just going to call V0 right there. Part A says, what was the ball's hang time? So we know that we've got to figure out the hang time. We can use either the x-axis or the y-axis, just kind of depending on what information we have. But we know that's going to be the same for either axis. How high did the ball go? That sounds like it's going to be on the y-axis. And what was the range? What axis is the range going to be on? X-axis. Excellent. Okay. So we have a basic drawing here. Uh, but we still need to label some stuff. We're, we've already labeled the initial velocity. Let's label this up here, the final velocity. That is, at least for the y-axis. And you say, why would I want to use that? What's special about that, that spot up there? The, what's that called again? The peak. What's special about the peak? The velocity zero. is zero at the peak on the y-axis. On the x-axis, that's when the velocity is constant. So if we're only focusing on the y-axis, then I can say, hey, this is my displacement on the y. Now, keep in mind, is this going to be the entire time for the object being in motion? No. no. It's going to be actually what half of the time. Excellent. Good. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, break this down here. We have a lovely triangle. Here's theta. Here's the V-naught. This will be the initial velocity that's on the y-axis, and then the velocity on the x, which, remember, is a constant. So how am I going to figure out what my, well, either velocity is, my x or my vi? How am I going to do that? With the trig functions, vx. So on the x-axis, that means we're going to use which trig function? Cosine. Right. So it's v-naught times cos theta. Okay. Let's actually go ahead and just plug that in. So I've got 4.47, and that's meters per second, times cosine of, what was that, 66 degrees. And make sure we're in degrees. Go ahead and tap that on your calculators, please. This is not something I can do in my head. Tap, tap, tap. Oh, smashing calculators. Sadness. 4.47 times the cosine of 66. Like I said, please make sure you are in degrees. Okay, what'd you get? 1.82. 1.82, and that's going to be the Vx is 1.82 meters per second. Meters per second. Lovely. Okay, so what's the <coughs> velocity on the y, or the initial velocity? That's going to be which trig function? Sine. Sine. Right. Okay, V naught times sine theta. That's going to be 4.47 meters per second times sine 66, oops, 66 degrees. Okay, and what's that going to be? 4.08. Okay, 
Four point oh eight. Excuse me. Meters per second. Right. Four point zero eight meters per second. Always want to hold on to those units, right? To make sure we are organized. Excellent. Questions on this so far? We're just doing some trick. Yes. Yeah, I plugged my calculator in three, and I plugged that in at two point two three. Okay. For the sign. Okay. Okay. Uh, for cos well, for either one of these, make sure you're typing this in. So type this in right now. Uh, for the cosine one, 4.47 cos 66. Enter. Okay. Are you getting? Okay. Well, that's the important part. Okay. Making sure that we're getting that we know how to do this, and that's why I want everyone to do this as we're going through, including um, all three people that are listening to this recording. Make sure that you're doing this as we're doing it. You can, you can laugh at those, at that witty humor. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, a disturbing laugh. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, make our lists. Um, hmm. I already started off with the X in green and the Y in blue, so let's just continue that. Oh, yes, it, it's very exciting. Y, okay, so initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, displacement, that's going to be on the Y, and then the time, okay? And we already know that the initial velocity is what? Four seven meters per second. Okay, 4.08 meters per second. Okay, what did we say about the final velocity? Zero. Zero. That's what we're talking about right up here because of the, the peaky peak. Zero. The acceleration is what? Uh, we can't say the, acceler the acceleration is gravity. Remember, technically gravity is a force, but we can say it's the acceleration. Acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field, or if you say, hey, Fair, can I just say G? Yes. Because you are physics G. The displacement on the Y, uh, I'm not really interested in just yet, although I will be. So but let me just set that equal to question mark, as well as the time. What about on the X axis? So velocity on the X, oh, it's right there, 1.82 meters per second. Remember, we're only going to list off one of the velocities. The acceleration is zero, so I'm not even going to bother writing that out. DX, that's going to be my range. That'll be my question mark for part C. And, of course, the time. So where can I solve for my time? Where do I know enough information? Which axis can I use to solve for the time? Yeah. The y-axis, right? Because I've got I've got my initial velocity right here, I've got my final velocity here, and I've got my acceleration. Three things, that's enough. So which equation will I use? In this case, I'm going to temporarily at least not care about displacement on the y. VBAT, yes. So the easiest one, lovely. I'm going to start going over here. VF equals... VI plus AT. So this is part A. Part A! Physics part A! No, no, don't do that. Okay. Initial velocity is something that we'll plug in in a minute. Final velocity is zero, so I can plug that in right now. And I'm going to rearrange and solve for time. So what is time equal to here? In terms of letters, what can I move to the other side? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to subtract the VI over to the other side, and that's equal to A times T. And then divide through by A or G. Okay. All right, so I have negative 4.08 meters per second divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. What to, squared? What do we notice about the negatives? They cancel out. Okay, lovely. And someone doing the math for me, please. Okay. 
Let's keep a few extra sig figs on there because we are not quite done. Point, point four one six, and that's going to be zero point four one six seconds. Okay, you say no, fair. You're done. That's what you wanted. You wanted the time, right? So are we done with part A? What was that the time for? We just solved the time to go from here up to there. What do we still have to do? Yeah, we've got to go downwards, right? So we've got to double that time. Time up equals time down. So 0 0.416 seconds times 2 equals, let's see if we can even do this in our heads, maybe 0 0.832 seconds, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So that's the total hang time, the total amount of time it's in the air. Good? Right. Okay, so that is part A. So, uh, Put a box around here. Lovely. Now, how high did the ball go? How high up? That means we're dealing with the displacement on the Y. Okay. So in this case, we are, I'm going to switch over to red. We are still looking for the, um, uh, on the Y axis. But this time, I'm going to not care about the time because Hey, you just solved for the time fair. Why not use it? Well, what if I made a mistake? There are some times where I have no choice but to use something I just solved for, like in part C. But in this case, I do have a choice. So I'm not going to use time. So which equation is that going to be? Okay. All right. Yes. So part B. The one without time is VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. And this is D on the y-axis. And I'm just going to change that right now to acceleration due to gravity. Is anything equal to zero? Yes! What is? The V final. How wonderful! So V final squared is also zero, right? Right. Okay. Once again, we're going to try to rearrange before we start plugging in. So what will I bring to the other side? And how? Yes. Minus VI squared equals 2G D sub Y. How do I get the D sub Y all by itself? Divide by 2G. Yes. Good. Good. Boom, boom. Okay, so now we can start plugging in. D equals, let's see, negative, oh, got a, got a scooch back up here. Uh, 4.08 meters per second. That whole thing, except the negative, square, oops, this way, divided by 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice the negative signs will cancel out. Okay, 4.08 squared is going to be 16 point something divided by approximately 20. So we can estimate this on our heads, uh, but let's get the actual answer, please. Tap, tap, tap. It's going to be around 6... Uh, 16 over 20, which is about 0.8. So you should get something right around there, yes? Tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. We're signaling for SLS here. Okay, what have we got? Point four oh eight something. Is that not it? Uh, 0.408 oh, nuts. Never mind. I got 0.85 meters. Is that what other people got? Okay, good. 
So D, that's on the Y, equals 0 0.85 meters. Good? Delicious? Right. Okay. So it went up a little less than one meter into the air. Okay. Now, what would the range on this be? Range, we said, was on which axis? The, the yeah, the x-axis. Okay, so we're talking about this whole thing here, displacement on the x. Okay, what's nice about this? What's the equation we're always going to use for the x-axis? Because there's no acceleration. dx equals vx times t. Distance equals rate times time. Yes? Yes. Okay, so what's the velocity? Here it is, right up here, 1.82 meters per second. 1.82 meters per second. And then what's my time? Yes, this this one right up right up here. Okay, remember the time on the x is equal to the time on the y. 0.832 seconds, and then just multiply that together, and what do we get? <clears throat> What's that? 1.5. 1.5 meters. <clears throat> meters. <clears throat> 1.53 meters, okay, just 1.5 meters is just fine, okay? So that's how far away the object lands. That's the displacement on the X, the range. Now remember what I had said about trying to avoid using something we just solved for because we could easily make the mistake. If you had not remembered to double the time right here, that would have also messed up the answer to part C. But at least part B, which we did not use time for, would have still been correct. If we had said, hey, I want to use um, some, some other equation that deals with time in there, except you had the mistake in part A and it would have followed through in part B. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, in part B, you don't want the double time. So if you had accidentally used the double time, then that would have really messed it up. So hmm, you would have really had to sit there and think about it. Man, physics. Delicious. Delicious.